Yo, yo, yo. What up, everybody? Good morning. Um, happy Sunday. Hope everybody's weekend's going well. Um, finishing BG3 today, I think. Finishing up Boulder's Gate 3, dude. It's seeming that way anyways. I mean, we went, we went full Ill Illithid yesterday. <clears throat> so, that's been a crazy thing. That was pretty cool. Um, and we'll see what happens when uh, fighting this Elder Brain and everything, which I think is coming up pretty quick for us. So, um, it'll be a good day, man. We'll have a good time. We'll see if we get through the end of BG3, but not before we get to January 7th edition of Video Gaming News. Let's go ahead and do what we do. Let's dive in here and see what's going on in the world of video games. Let's go. Yeah, man, Willis, the 13-year-old that beat Tetris or, or uh, kill screened it. That's that's about as beat as it's gonna get. Uh, pretty pretty dope. We talked about that. Also, uh, the next day got to rip on a reporter for from Sky News for talking about how Willis needed to go outside and play. Uh, get wrecked, Sky News. Farming Adventure Tales of CQ? What's this? No, no, no. No gaming Bible. Oh yeah, here it is. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and call out this uh, this news anchor. What was this news anchor's name? Um, Jane Secker. Jane Secker. Get wrecked, right, Jane Secker. As a mother, I would just say step away from the screens, go outside, get some fresh air. Beating Tetris is not a life goal. Um... What a ridiculous, I mean, we've talked about this already, but uh, look, I'm, I'm going to keep bringing it up. It's absolutely not Jane Secker's place to be trying to uh, parent this individual. Jane Secker has no idea how, uh, you know, how much time Willis spends outside. Uh, beating Tetris might not be a life goal for Jane Secker, who's 51, but for Willis, who is 13, this was a uh, a big deal, and uh, this was, I mean, something they're interested in, and and got it done. And to be fair, this is a huge accomplishment for testing the, the limits of the the human brain. Um, Tetris is a a very tough game. Uh, especially at this type of level, at the very high level. And it's a big deal for the gaming industry, which is massive. So, um, you know, all the way around, Jane Secker can get wrecked and needs to shut up. We talked about the new uh, Game Pass games already. Already talked about the new Amazon Prime gaming games as well. I haven't even seen it yet. Riot Games drops Mysterious Arcane Season 2 trailer, reigniting a big fan theory. This is not dropping till November, I think, November of this year. Jesus. I've been waiting three, it'll, it'll be three years, dude. I think, I think three years? 2021, I think is when it released. November of 2021, Arcane Season 1. Look, I know it's not a game, but it is based off of uh, League of Legends, an adaptation, and it's amazing. 
It's so good, dude. Um, Arcane Season 1 was an absolute banger, man. It was amazing to watch. So good. Could watch it over and over. Um, and I'm, I've just been waiting to find out when Season 2 is going to drop because it's been uh, such a long time now. Apparently three years in between seasons. But if it's anything close to being on par with season one, worth the wait, I guess. Really good. Maybe we'll watch the trailer. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Probably, probably check the trailer out there. There are so many old games that are being redone in UE5, Unreal Engine 5, and they look fantastic. Most of them are just, you know, fan-made tributes to these these universes or, or um, you know, older games and stuff like that, and they're, they're amazing, you know? So, knowing what just, you know individuals are able to get done with creating these kinds of universes it just shows i think that what a very user-friendly engine ue5 is and uh as we continue to move along with ue5 games being developed the the more we're going to see exactly what that engine can bring to the table you know pretty impressive Yep, we read about this yesterday. This feels terrible. Um, they were quite, we talked about this in depth yesterday, but if you didn't know, Net Netflix has had a pretty solid um, pivot into gaming. It's been, uh, their business strategy behind it, it, it has been pretty solid. There's a piece missing as far as I'm concerned, but overall they've done a pretty good job and one of the key elements of promoting games on their platform was them being outspoken about the fact that you don't have to deal with ads you don't have to deal with in-game monetization and things like that and, and them stating that uh not we shouldn't be expecting it on their platform or anything either and and uh now here we are two years later two years later and they're already doing it you know just it feels terrible I find Rush coming to the Switch. Interesting. We already know all this. Um, we're not going to get more. In, there's, there's a lot we don't know yet. There there's a good amount of hardware specifications we're, we're not really informed on yet and we will get more about what the ms clients msi claw will will contain hardware wise that we are not already informed of um in roughly a day or two as ces kicks off that's when we're going to get more information on the claw and we'll dive into it then January 18th game leaked. We'll see what they're saying. New Spyro tease, huh? Every game store has good news for fans. 
put both these Epic Game Store things together here. Oh, dude, Pokemon Company donates 50 million um, in Japanese to support the uh, earthquake victims. What's Japanese currency? Is the yen? Is that what it is? I can't remember. I thought the... Yeah, I don't know. Might be getting that mixed up. Um... Talked about this yesterday, so I'm not going to dive in there. Um, there are dedicated controllers being made for Samsung Hub, um, but they're also allowing like I think it's it's basically like a lot of third-party controllers to connect and everything too. So um, we'll see how that goes. We looked at it. Excuse me. Kid-friendly PC games with Humble Bundle. Let's take a look there. Let's see what that is. What's up? Hi Fi Rush. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Sky News, this is that that reporter's been ripped apart right now. And I agree, it's appropriate. Jane Secker needs uh, uh maybe maybe Jane Secker is just a little living a little bit too much of a boomer life or something, dude. Doesn't understand what this means. <laughs> Wants to blame video games for everything, you know? Interesting. See that? Uh, I guess we'll stick with this for the uh, for the news today. A little bit bleak on um, finding articles, but Sundays tend to be like that sometimes. So it's all right, man. We'll uh, we'll see what we got here. Let's see what we got. Cool. Pokemon Company donates 50 million Japanese to support earthquake victims. Mm. Yeah, 7.6 magnitude earthquake struck Japan on New Year's Day. Pokemon Company has announced it will donate 50 million 
uh, around $345,750 to support those affected by the uh, U.S. dollars to support the uh, uh, those affected by the recent devastating earthquake in Japan. Um, on New Year's Day, a 7.6 magnitude earthquake struck the country, devastating many neighborhoods and killing at least 92 people. Dang, man. The earthquake also triggered a uh, small tsunami that flooded at least 296 acres of land, according to Japan, uh, Japan's land ministry. As of Friday, Japan's self-defense forces doubled the number of troops taking part in rescue efforts, 4,600, according to the Kyoto uh, Aid News Agency. Pokemon Company said yesterday it would support efforts to help those affected by the dis disaster. Um, quote, we would like to express our deepest sympathies to those affected by the 2020 Noto Peninsula earthquake that occurred on January 1st. 2024 the uh pokemon company has decided to donate 50 million yen yet it, it is yen okay i was right to the japanese red cross society and donations to support organizations in order to help those affected by the disaster and to help restore the affected areas additionally through the pokemon with you foundation we will continue to carry out activities to help children affected by the disaster regain their smiles we sincerely pray for the earliest possible recovery and reconstruction of the disaster stricken areas Right on, man. That's a, a yeah. It's, natural disasters are brutal, man. Japan is notorious for their earthquakes, just like places like, you know, California, n notorious for forest fires. You know, a lot of Canada too. Lots of Canada. Canada had terrible forest fires uh, this past summer and spring. Um, you know, there are places. I mean, I'm not as familiar with the world as a whole you know as far as uh, more more my country which is the u.s but there are places like the southern uh east part of the u.s southeast part of the u.s and the coast there's just um hurricanes everywhere where i grew up it's, it's tornadoes you know and um so no matter what the case is you know <clears throat> the bigger badder versions of all this stuff can be catastrophic i mean we've seen what like happened to new orleans back with the katrina stuff and um you know even the ones that are just of moderate size and, and magnitude can be destructive for sure and and um you know anybody i think that's dealing with with these kinds of uh ramifications of, of natural disasters i hope that uh Everybody's doing well, and, and uh, we get things sorted out, especially for these uh, recent earthquake victims, you know. <sighs> Pretty rough. Get a ton of kid-friendly PC games with the Humble Bundle. Outright Games has teamed up with Humble Bundle for the Outright Heroes and of Film and Television. Um, so we can pull it up right here. I'll link it for you too. The, uh, this features 17 games valued at roughly $574 for only $15. It's got Star Trek, Prodigy, Supernova, DC's Justice League, Cosmic Chaos, Jumanji, the video game, Ben 10, Transformers, Battlegrounds, much more. Each purchase of the bundle will benefit, uh, UNICEF UK as well as the outright game starting stating that 100% of their net profits from the bundle will be donated. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, which of these games are you most excited to play? This is, uh, yeah, I, I promote Humble quite often. Uh, pretty, pretty, if you're not familiar with Humble, uh, this is the way they'll, they'll do a lot of their, their game bundles like this. Sometimes you can get, uh, they do other bundles too, like uh, books, just software in general, stuff like that. But um, you see something like the Heroes of Film and Tele Television bundle aimed more uh, towards children. You'll see how much you can pay or how much you have to pay. $5, right? $5 gets you six items, these six items. $10 will get you these 11 items. $15 gets you 17 items. And um, then you can pay over that amount because Humble Bundle, a, a, a large portion of the um profits do go to help charities and stuff like that so you can also see there's going to be a uh drop down box here that allows you to adjust your donations so the default donation 21 dollars to outright games which they said everything that is a profit from these bundles they will donate as well 
So uh, remember that. But a uh, dollar seventy-five would go to UNICEF. Seven dollars to Humble as a corporation, and five dollars and twenty-five cents of this thirty-five dollar purchase. If that's what you were, would do. Would go to Geek Tyrant Industries. Now uh, you can select to change it to where more of it goes to charity. Uh, you can do custom amounts where you you've got sliders and stuff. It's pretty cool, man. And um, they've got a lot of these kinds of bundles. We look at the games right now, games bundles they have. Um, Play Pink. Interesting. Pinky. Uh, outright Heroes of Film and Television. Happy Holidays with GOG RPGs. They've got uh, all kinds of bundles that are always cycling in and out that uh, a large portion or at least a, a, some sort of portion of the purchases goes to charities and you can select different charities that that they support to give to as well based on your preference things like that so very cool uh operation here and organization with humble bundle with the things they do and and uh definitely worth supporting if you're interested in any of the uh, games and bundles they have absolutely robocop versus predator now available for free um, recently, Robocop Rogue City has been reminding fans of just how cool it is to take control of everyone's favorite top, top cop turned bot cop as he cleans up the streets. Of course, this has made fans nostalgic for some of the vintage Dark Horse comics that we, but that would put Robocop against some particularly over-the-top enemies, including the Terminator. Robocop vs. the Terminator was such a cool idea that it spawned its own video game. Here's great news for fans of the franchise, even though we never got the planned Robocop vs. Predator comic series. This concept is now a fan-made video game you can play for free. Robocop vs. Predator was created by game developer Oscar Celestini. Celestini. You can download the game from its official website linked right here. The game involves side-scrolling action, and players will quickly discover that the nostalgia factor is cranked to 11. That's because this creative game takes many of its gameplay and design cues from the Game Boy version of the classic action title Robocop vs. The Terminator. If you really want to maximize your nostalgia, the game offers different screen filters for you to choose from. While the colors vary slightly, one thing that all of these video filters have in common is that they make it appear as if you're playing an old-school CRT television set. That means you can give a Robocop vs. Predator the scan lines from your childhood, take it from a retro gamer, the scan lines help instantly transport you to your childhood, even as they make the pixelated graphics look that much better. <laughs> Dude, wild. What is Robo? Yeah, yeah. You can read about what it's about and everything, the lore behind it. There's uh, only five zones for the game. Zone split into two acts. Uh, there's a bonus shooting stage. That's pretty neat. That's pretty neat, man. Check it out if you're interested. The links to grab everything are inside the article. That's pretty wild. New Spyro Tease has fans excited for 2024. Okay. Um, it has been six years since the release of Spyro Reignited Trilogy, much longer since the last new installment in the series. Hasn't been a proper Spyro the Dragon game since 2008's The Legend of Spyro Dawn of the Dragon. Suffice to say, fans of the Purple Dragon aren't just hungry for something new, but starving. Over on X, formerly known as Twitter, the official Spyro account tweeted 2024 motto, accompanied by an image of Spyro with the text, You Gotta Believe. As you would expect, fans of the mascot platformer have been taken have taken this to be a tease because, well, on the surface, this is what it appears to be. Whether it's a tease that a new game is coming to be revealed or released in 2024, who knows? But it appears to be a tease that something is, in fact, happening this year. Uh... Of course, it is possible there's nothing to this tweet, but that would be a cool thing to do to Spyro fans. Um, more of this, it comes on the back of another tweet that caught the attention of fans of the Purple Dragon a few weeks ago, which teased latest experiments in UE5 from developer Toys for Bob, the team behind Spyro Reignited Trilogy. Um, obviously, if you connect the two tweets, it could point to a new Spyro game being made in the fancy new Unreal Engine 5. It's all speculation. Grain of salt for the moment. But it is some, I guess, solid info to go off of that we might get some new Spyro coming our way here shortly. Oh, 2023 Smash hit and Xbox exclusive Hi-Fi Rush. Coming to Nintendo Switch. More people deserve to play this game. 
it should be on on more platforms this is a banger of a game um and a good example of how uh there are still few and far between albeit um decent triple a studios out there <laughs> doing work you know so far we only know that hi-fi rush is making its way to xbox series x and s xbox cloud gaming and windows pc the microsoft title microsoft published developed by tango softworks let's be very clear okay yep okay they know it here they know it here uh shadow dropped on january 25th and players have uh, of last year players have loved this game gaining it a 10 out of 10 rating not by everybody it wasn't a perfect game it was very very good i, I hate seeing this it's 10 out of 10 it's the best thing ever the game features a colorful and cartoony art style which has many players wondering if the devs at tango will release a switch version of the game hi-fi rush is not one of the graphically intensive games that need a beefy system to play the game having cartoony graphics has given many players the feeling that it would look beautiful as a switch title there have been many discussions online on the same but a certain post from reset era by a known leaker might just be the reveal of a possibility of a switch version for the game nate drake a known name in the industry to be a reliable source for leaks in the past he has uncovered many secrets about the gaming world that have proven to be true over time when a post was uploaded titled nate drake a critically acclaimed xbox first party title in a uh, game of the year conversations for the year it released will come to a competitor platform in 2024 serviced on the website it turned many heads although the message was very cryptic other users started digging deeper, and when there was general clarity among users, a comment by a user called Lolly Lolelo, <laughs> I might have butchered that, caught the eye of the community. A user posted a message stating, Hi Fi Rush available on Switch, I'll bet. And uh, Lolly Lolelo, I think, replied, And you'll win. The words hold so much weight, you might ask. Why do they? Well, uh, that user has been an active member of the community, and in the past, they have confirmed the fact that the uh, Persona 3 Reload was going to drop before there was any news from the devs at Atlas. Um, grain of salt here, right? Uh, also, we don't know for sure, but it does seem like a game that if they can get it to perform well on the Switch, it would be a great game for the Switch, I think. So... We'll keep track. We'll see what happens. Probably solid speculation here, but speculation nonetheless. Um, Epic Games Store free game for January 18th. Leaked. Um, before I even touch on this, the more appropriate thing to do is tell everybody before that, uh, before the 11th and before the 18th, both, you should be grabbing Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, this is supposed to be a very good game rated really solidly and uh it's free it's free on epic dude everybody should just be grabbing this it's a no-brainer so go grab this okay don't forget um now the game for january 18th would not even be the next game given away but the one after so the epic game store has carved out a niche for itself with its intriguing practice of offering free games to its users this tradition has not only enhanced user engagement, but has also provided a platform for various games to reach a wider audience. As January 2024 unfolds, the gaming community is rife with speculation about the next title to be graced with the label of a free game on the Epic Game Store. Buzz suggests the indie platformer Love might be the next free offering spanning from the 18th to the 25th. Speculation follows ongoing excitement generated by Epic. Ooh, excuse me which has become a staple for the digital store, the uh, free game giveaways. Gamers have been treated to a new title each day, expanding their digital libraries and exploring diverse gaming genres. The current culmination of this giveaway is Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, yes, available until Thursday, January 11th, uh, that morning. Notably, this game, along with the initial offering of the Destiny 2 Legacy Collection, deviates from the daily giveaway format by being available for a full week instead of just a day, right? Following Guardians of the Galaxy, the game's sell forth is set to take center stage from January 11th to the 18th, right? This was the full list of the Epic Game Store free games uh, for January. 
this is actually covering everything that was given away during the holiday period as well which is just getting uh summed up right now destiny 2 legacy collection dnf duel melver idol this is a solid if you've been wanting to dive into destiny 2 i promoted this i was like it's you know we've talked a lot about bungie here lately and sony and how uh it's looking pretty bad for bungie everything that we've seen here lately from the uh it seems like this kind of all started coming to a head whenever they released uh their most recent dlc expansion and it was not received very well and then we started finding out about a lot of um uncomfortable things happening within bungie as a developer and a company people getting fired um a, a lot of the extracurricular kinds of things that have been set up in the company beforehand uh, and had been a staple of the company for quite some time to uh keep employees happy uh keep morale up so that it's all been done away with apparently lots of crazy stuff going out of there but um destiny 2 is i think a very well developed game i haven't been a fan of the way they've pivoted pivoted into the uh the way they've monetized the game but um it is a free to play game it feels more like free to try there's a good amount of content for the base game but there's a ton of content in the dlcs that stack up to be quite expensive if you're not getting them on a sell or not getting them for free which is why i promoted this destiny 2 Leg legacy collection uh had the first three entire dlcs for free i think is what it was and um there was no reason for people not to jump on this and grab this especially if you've been wanting to try destiny 2 it was a great time to get a lot of the uh additional content for zero monies man zero monies get in there and give it a shot so i promoted this pretty heavily um there was notable games and then very 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 notable games fallout 3 game of the year edition while this game has a lot of age under it it is i will say one of the best bethesda games i've ever played um fallout 3 was phenomenal i loved it it was great i think that it still is going to hold up pretty well for people that want to go back and try it out the you know i think that we're definitely at the port or the a timeline where some some games like this are probably and we've heard speculation and stuff coming out of bethesda as well but you talk about a game like fallout 3 it's such a banger you know remake maybe i mean it's time when did fallout 3 release it's got to have been you know close to 15 years ago oh yeah dude yeah over <laughs> october of 2008 you know um so <laughs> yeah well over 15 years you know and uh such a good game but it's gonna have obviously it's uh issues with being quite a ways away from being a modern title now and and uh, so it's just something to think about. Uh, yeah, we've heard speculation that there's some of these older Bethesda games that are going to get remastered, remade, stuff like that. I think Fallout 3 is very deserving of that kind of consideration. But nonetheless, if you've never played it, it was a great time to grab the game and uh, get a taste because it's very good. Ghostwire Tokyo, uh, the game from Tango that came out before Hi-Fi Rush and after The Evil Within, uh, it's supposed to be a really solid play as well. The Outer Worlds Spacer's Choice Edition, fantastic giveaway right there um you know they did a lot of stuff ghost runner plague tale innocence marvel's guardians of the galaxy lots of really good giveaways on epic i tried to promote it i mean i promoted it con con constantly i always do i think that it's a you know a no-brainer for people to get in here and get free content free software and if you're not doing that it's uh there's only one person to blame for not taking advantage of that in this world of video games that is always so expensive seemingly to us and only getting more expensive if you're not taking advantage of these free games you know that i don't know what to tell you um so apparently what we have is self-worth and love coming after the guardians of the galaxy giveaway though okay and uh segueing into this epic game store has good news for fans um uh, ensuring that they keep returning to the digital storefront regularly um we'll just 
summarize this. The Epic Game Store will continue its weekly free game giveaways throughout the year of 2024, as confirmed by a reliable leaker. That's good news. Random mode time. <laughs> All right. Either one of those emotes and you'll get a win. Some PC gamers have been hesitant to use the Epic Game Store due to missing features compared to Steam. If you're not grabbing free software, I mean, it's just for, for things like, I don't, I don't know what to tell people. If you're, I know there are an amount of people out there that go, I won't use Epic because their, uh, you know, profile, I can't, you know, their pro, your, your, your profile and, and you can't get achievements the same way you can it's not customizable like it is. you can't flex really right you can't flex like on steam there's that's still that's not a, a good enough reason as far as i'm concerned to not grab free banger content that epic gives away as well as well i don't want to have a library on another platform that's still not a good enough reason it's free your account's free these games are free there's no reason honestly other than you being stubborn to not be grabbing free content. I mean, you know, maybe <laughs> personally, I'd like taking advantage of this kind of stuff. Maybe some other people don't feel like they need to. Maybe they, they got deeper pockets or something, you know, but gaming is continuing to get more expensive. I don't see why people wouldn't be taking advantage of these opportunities other than just being stubborn, really. Um, some PC gamers have been, yeah, yeah missing features. The store has already given away four games in January. Look, don't get me wrong. It's, it's, and Steam is a, an amazing platform. It's my platform of choice. It has been forever, ever. It uh, has a lot of great functionality and uh, quality of life features for us and everything. So I'm not saying anybody should be, you know, maybe looking at Epic as a, a platform over Steam. That's absolutely not what I'm saying. But still should be taking advantage of the, the uh, free games over there, I think. Absolutely. The store has already given away four games in January, indicating that the free game program will continue as, as predicted. Um, Bill Bill Coon has uh, leaked that these free games will continue throughout this year. Yeah. Um... Yeah, Epic hasn't made their own announcement about this in particular, but uh, has already stated giving away free games for users to add to their digital libraries. Uh, already started, excuse me. Yeah, as because obviously we're in January of 2024. They're already uh, been giving away games. They are showing what games are coming next, things like that. So it's pretty safe bet it'll continue throughout this year. Um they're just talking about some of the other stuff we already talked about there. I mean, th I think there was reason for people to be um, worried about whether or not the free game gives giveaways would continue because we know that Epic apparently has been struggling as well. I think they've made a lot of bad business decisions that have led them to this point. They fired eight, roughly 850 employees towards the end of the year, which is disgusting to see. Um, and they sold off companies like Bandcamp. And, uh, you know, one of the things people keep bringing up is, well, they're giving away a ton of free games too, you know? And that can't be good for business. So a lot of people were, I think, wondering whether the free game giveaways would continue or not. And uh, apparently, they it looks like they're going to right now, which is great. I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, Let's see. Riot Games drops... Oh, dude, we'll watch this last. We'll watch this last. Um, Farming Adventure Tales of CQ invites you to entertain monsters in your inn and become one. What? I can become a monster? The Cooperative Farm Game. What is this? Have we seen this? Look at that 
water, dude. Sick. Oh my god, look at the fishing. Oh my god. Fishing! Yo, what up, bro? Good day, sir. Good day. I mean, it's definitely got some Breath of the Wild vibe, doesn't it? It's like, it, it looks a lot like Breath of the Wild slash Genshin. Much, I think, I think it's got much more of a, a Breath of the Wild vibe, like Legend of Zelda vibe. Just, uh, graphically, artistically, and everything. Did they just like, <laughs> God, the more I'm watching it, the more it just looks like Breath of the Wild. Or Tears of the Kingdom, whatever. Those look delicious. Dude, it looks like Breath of the Wild. Oh my god, look at the enemies too. Jesus, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude. Interesting. Um, upcoming farm sim take place in a magical world of spirits and monsters where you restore a deteriorating countryside in and explore the town and region populated by people, monsters. Hold on. There we go. People's monsters, people's monsters and more. The game plans to launch with cooperative play and it also that's kind of cool. It'll also have a neat looking twist by wearing ancient masks. You can use the power of creatures and monsters. One example is using the rooting power of abortive till fields. Um, Descriptions of the game involve all of the stuff you'd expect, like farming, building new facilities, more pastoral pursuits like chickens and cows, but other others include concepts like making your uh, revitalized home into a luxurious inn for monsters once more. Interesting. Uh, this... Tales of CQ will launch a Kickstarter on January 12th. Also has a Steam page where you can learn more. Here. Pull it up on Steam for everybody real quick if you're interested. 
That is not what happened. Dude, wait, what? Copy. There we go. Yeah, they've got the Kickstarter uh, right here that you can access. They've got a Discord server, all that stuff. If this looks interesting to you, you know, check it out. Maybe check it out. That's the uh, Steam page. Here's the article as well. There will be links in here also. There you go. Last but not least, quick news segment today. Man, Sunday, a bit bleak, but it's cool, man. We'll get in here, we'll play games, um, and see what happens with finishing up BG3 after we finish this article. If anybody has anything else you want to add to the video gaming news segment for this morning, maybe I missed or haven't talked about before, um, let me know in chat. And we'll address it before we move on and play Baldur's Gate 3 and maybe some finals today too, okay? Riot Games drops Mysterious Arcane Season 2 trailer, uh, reigniting a big fan theory. Riot Games has released a first look at the teaser trailer for the highly anticipated second season of Arcane, an animated TV show based on League of Legends. And the first season is amazing. It's so flipping good. Uh, it, it's been terribly daunting and and just waiting for the next season to come man <laughs> that i'm not even a league of legends fan if per se i, I find the game's fine it's fine it's just not, not something that has really uh piqued my interest too much i played a little bit of it just to see what the game was about and it just wasn't really my my cup of tea so um you know i haven't taken a deep dive in here but this flipping show is fantastic Arcane Season 1 on Netflix, so flipping good, and I uh, can't wait for Season 2. Um, so let's just watch this trailer. They're talking, what they're talking about here, Riot Games revealed its first official uh, teaser trailer for the second season of its widely popular, wildly popular animated series, Arcane, which is based on the online game League of Legends. The teaser is short and sweet, has re-sparked a major fan theory from Season 1. So we'll talk about that, which is... Um, and then we'll, we'll watch this, okay? Only 44 seconds long, the trailer features a character called Singed, also known as the Doctor, giving what appears to be a blood transfusion. He checks a pocket watch and then tilts his head, and the camera pans up to reveal an enormous beast hanging from the ceiling above as it fades to black. While the trailer didn't even crack a minute in length, it's sure to spread hype after seemingly confirming fans' most persistent theory. The theory in question was that Vander, a popular character from Season 1 who sadly met his end, is, in fact, Warwick. Uh, a well-known monster from League of Legends who was transformed by agonizing experiments. Fans of Season 1 were quick to draw similarities between Vander's storyline and that of Warwick's lore, making connections between the two. Is it possible the Mad Doctor Singed has transformed V and Jinx's previous protector into some kind of twisted beast? And what will the sisters do if they come face to face with the man who raised them turned monster? Riot Games has taken to the, uh, the liberty of reimagining characters for the show. It will be interesting to see how they reimagine Warwick. For now, at least Arcane Season 2 has plenty of unanswered questions to leave fans wanting more. And we don't get it until November. Uh, it should be noted that in October of the previous year of 2023, <clears throat> Riot took to its social channels to address complaints regarding the inconsistencies within its Rune Terra universe, in particular inconsistencies with the canon of Arcane compared to League of Legends. Due to these, uh, these contradictions between lore and arcane and lore and uh, League of Legends, the developer announced it was merging all of its content into one canonical timeline. Originally, arcane was its in its own continuity, but it's now part of the wider League of Legends lore. Notably, Riot stated back in October that there were still some contradictions between arcane and convergence, a League of Legends story, and that the company will be ironing these out over time. Yeah, arcane season two will be releasing on Netflix in uh november of this year so uh we've got a bit to go before we'll be able to uh, get the next season the wait is a struggle the game the the first season was so good and well worth uh numerous watches in my opinion but let's see what the uh trailer come on man let's watch it on youtube i guess let me preface this by stating that the full news segment that will get cut out here and put on, uh, uh, you know, like YouTube could potentially get this trailer have to be taken out. 
because Netflix does not is not real kind about you, you know, reshowing their their content on your own channel and stuff like that. So I'll potentially have to be cutting this out. But just know that this is a trailer that's out there. You can go find it and watch it if you want. Um, if you're watching this as a VOD later on, okay? And it did have to be taken out. I'm not sure if it will, but it quite potentially will. nice cool man i'll link this for you too if you want it. cool stuff man i cannot wait for the next season of arcane good stuff good stuff um again if i couldn't keep the trailer in the uh, vod and you're watching this as a vod i do apologize but it's out there for you to take a look at if you want and uh that's the jam dude that's the jam so uh i don't know we'll go play uh play games for the rest of the day fantastic hope you guys are doing well hope the weekend's been solid uh i don't know we're gonna go play some bg3 if anybody's been able to uh come hang out with us this morning you're not familiar with what we do this is the way we start out all of our streams six days a week every day but wednesday um starting at roughly 6 a.m cst cdt we begin with video gaming news we uh we try to stay current up to date and uh promote a healthier industry for us as gaming enthusiasts and consumers and everything and if uh you know you're enjoying this content you can go take a look at all the other previous video gaming news segments we've done uh important highlighted segments out of the full video gaming news segments uh funny clips and highlights playthroughs that we've done of games i try my best to get all the content out there um from them being put into highlights on the twitch channel as well as being exported over to our YouTube channel. So uh, there are lots of playlists out there. You can take a look at all the content. And if you're enjoying it, come hang out with us when we're live. we got a banger community here of awesome people, man, uh, creating a, a, a cool space for us to be every day. Video games brings us together. That's what we love and we enjoy. But, uh, you know, cultivate a community here of uh, just good people's men trying to take care of one another. Being void of toxicity, negativity, you know, uh, just try to be civil about stuff and uh, promote a welcoming, uh, healthy, caring community of, of people that enjoy video games, man. So if you can dig it, come be a part of it when we are live. We're always looking for more uh, good people to be a part of what we do. Other than that, happy flipping Sunday. Stay healthy, stay safe, be kind. I'm going to run us our outro real quick for the news segment, but uh, the stream's not going down. I'm not going anywhere. As soon as the outro's finished, we will be getting started with gameplay for the rest of the day. So don't go anywhere. I'll be right back.